Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are looking at, uh, we're doing our set review of Midnight Hunt. This is part of my uh, Halloween thing, um, doing the creepy opening. So yeah, Innistrad Midnight Hunt, top five value cards. This set actually does have a pretty decent amount of value, um, especially considering it's what, like two years old now, I think? So probably more than that. I'm saying two and I'm already like, yeah, no, it's longer. Uh, I'm old. Anyway, top five value cards. We are looking at the top five value cards for this set. I'm using MTG Goldfish because it's much easier to read, basically, than other sites. So that's my uh, my main uh, <clears throat> reason for doing that. I usually use TCG Player, but I'm using this just because, yeah. If you're looking at a whole like set full of cards, using TCG Player or Card Kingdom or something like that is really difficult. So it's much easier to just like get the full list like it shows it on there. Please hit like and subscribe. It really does make a big difference. I always hit like to make sure I don't double watch videos. I think I might be the only person who does that. But anyway, I probably shouldn't say that. I keep saying that and then I'm like, oh wait, I'm telling them not to watch my video more than once. Oops. Okay, Augur of Autumn for a one green green is a two three. Um, so this is, yeah, <clears throat> you may look at the top card of your library at any time you may play lands from the top of your library. So again, it's look at the top card, not play with it revealed. That's also a benefit right there. Playing with it revealed means everyone's going to know whatever card is coming up in your deck or every card you're drawing. And this is like, you get to see it. They don't. So it's still hidden information. You may play lands from the top of your library. So first of all, you get lands, which is really great. You're, it saves you a lot of card draw. If like every time a land comes up, you're just like, okay, land draw straight in. You also, it will like, you know, you make a lot more of those land drops and like not have to like miss out a lot. Um, this can also be extremely useful just if you're doing any kind of scry, right? If you can look at the top card of your library at any time, then you, you can decide like, oh, do I even want to try it? Do I want that? And do I put it on the bottom? Or yeah, sorry, do I want that? Or do I scry and try to get to the bottom? So it's kind of like pre-scry, scry. Um, anyway, Coven. As long as you control three or more creatures with different power. I really like Coven, I should do a video on that. You may cast creature spells from the top of your library. So you can play lands from the top of your library. And if you have three different it's super easy to do. Three different value, attack values among creatures you control. Three, not not hard. Uh, one, one, and a two, two, and anything else. Uh, yeah, but then you can play creatures as well. So two card types you can play right off your library that you don't have to reveal and you can look at it anytime. Basically, like it's an extra card in hand for two different types and it will, uh, it makes your other card draws more impactful. Is what I really like about that is that if you're able to like always just play land for the top or you know your creature cast them from the top, then um, when you are drawing a card, you're going to get something else that you're hopefully wanting. Again, combine this with Scry, and yeah, oh boy. Anyway, three ninety two only. Ren and seven. Okay, three green green for this planeswalker, legendary planeswalker. Five starting loyalty. It's plus one. Reveal the top four cards to your library. Put all land cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. So maybe that's good in some decks. Maybe not with others. With gra Graveyard Matters decks, it's great. Um, if, yeah, if it's not what you want to do, then it's not good. Anyway, uh, put for zero, put any number of land cards from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. This is a crazy ramp ability, right? There's a lot of way, ways to get lands to your hand that are actually pretty simple. And get whatever land you want to your hand. And uh, it's a lot easier and lower mana cost than getting them into the battlefield usually. So here you can stack up lands in your hand and then just use this for zero and put all the lands down at once. That's crazy, especially with this plus one that... Uh, gets out of hand quickly 
And then I'm going to say he can make a tree folk for minus three that has power and toughness equal to your the number of lands. Sure. Minus eight. Return all permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. You get an emblem with you know have no maximum hand size. Again, that just means for the whole game, no maximum hand size. And yeah, you're going to be able to like keep just loading up your hand and then all the lands you're just going to chuck in at the same time. Oh boy. Anyway, 648 only. This should be more expensive. Lear, Disciple of the Drowned. I think other than the number one card, this would be my pick. Um, three blue blue for a three four. Uh, she's almost like a... Uh, an anti-wizard wizard? I, is how I look at it? Anyway, spells can't be countered. So all spells can't be countered for everyone. Not just your spells, everybody's spells. Which is not what wizards usually want to do, but anyway. Each incident sorcery card in your graveyard has flashback. The flashback cost is equal to the card's mana cost. Ooh. Remember, if you use flashback, it's going to exile it, unless it's something like an adventure, and then it goes to the adventure, right? Yeah, but otherwise, yeah, you're just going to be exiling them. It is a second casting for the same price, or for the same CMC. I shouldn't say price when I mean C CMC, but that is insanely good. Um, there's so many decks that that will just like pay off in. Again, I think a Wizard Kindred deck, she's not for that, right? Wizards, you're usually going to be wanting to counter spells and stuff like that. This is like a wizard that goes into non-wizard decks. Uh, yeah. That's why I call her kind of like anti-wizard. Anyway, 723 only. Should be more. Adeline Resplendent 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 Cathar. I can't say the names. Uh, anyway, so she's one white white for a uh, question mark four with vigilance. And she, she, her power is equal to the number of creatures you control, which is always nice. Whenever you attack, for each opponent, create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token that's tapped and attacking uh, that player or planeswalker they control. So this is just going to make like a whole bunch of tokens, which may not sound impressive, but if you've got things like ETBs, like Alliance, if you've got Rumor Gatherer, you're going to be scrying and drawing a card every turn off, off of this one trigger. Um, really good combination there. Also, any kind of Anthem effect. You definitely want to have Anthem effects going if you're uh, playing this card. And then those 1-1s one become pretty intimidating pretty quick. And Human is also very good for that too, right? There's a lot of Human Kindred synergy in there. Uh, in this set, I mean. 731. The Meat Hook Massacre. This is by far the number one card you want to get. Um, I played against it once and I lost. Not surprising. X black black for a legendary enchantment. So first of all, it's a board wipe. When it enters the battlefield, each creature gets minus X and minus X until end of turn. Again, minus X minus X means indestructible, doesn't matter. It's still going to just melt indestructible creatures. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. So if you use this to take out a bunch of your own, even like you make a whole bunch of token creatures and you play this, you're just like taking everyone else's life total down a whole whack load. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, you gain one life. So you could do this like life gain, life loss kind of like uh, aristocrat strategy usually that um, that especially Orzov is big with. I think this is an amazing like aristocrat card in particular which is a great fit for black and even golgari or orzov can make a lot of use of anyway 55 dollars so this has been the top five cards um from innistrad midnight hunt and take it easy